Hello everyone and if you're in the UK I hope you enjoyed that mini heat wave we had on Friday. Gosh it was a scorcher. It was beautiful. Oh, I was very sweaty but I did enjoy it. Anyhow welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to answer answer some of the questions that you have been put it on to my comments and also send them to me by email and thank you very much for your emails it's uh, it's very nice to hear from you all so let's start with the first one probably the big one am I going to ditch my estate agent yes I drafted the email to them now as someone said to me um, in the comments uh, maybe just say you're picking the keys up See if they and give them a week to see if they do anything. But I think we have to face it. They're not going to do anything. I was watching um, Moving with Charlie. He did a, um, a, like a live stream. So I've still got to learn how to do that. Um, on, I think it was Wednesday or Thursday this week. Anyway, this week. And it was very interesting because he said, if you uh, drop the price of your house, it makes it even harder to sell and longer to sell. So... Even if I went to the agents now and said, okay, drop the price. A, I don't trust them. And it do doesn't look like that would be a very good strategy, and especially in the market as it is. So I am going to terminate with my agents. I drafted the email. I'm going to send that to them tomorrow. I expect I'm going to have a bit of a battle because as Moving with Charlie says, sorry about that opinion, as Moving with Charlie says, just ask them to be released from the contract. But we'll see. I'll let you know how you get on, how I get on. Um, and then what I'm going to do is when I get back from Australia, I'm going to start again. I'm going to find an agent that I can trust that isn't going to hold me to a long sole agency agreement and who I don't find all that marketing bluff. I hate that marketing bluff, bluff, nonsense. I also was thinking about maybe just putting it on purple bricks. So if you're not from the UK, purple bricks is kind of like you do it on your own. I think they do some services for you now, but like they will take your pictures, they will put it on right move for you, and then it all goes through an app or a portal. And um, you basically run the viewings yourself, but you save quite a bit on agents fees. And I am liking two months because at the end of the day, if your house is on right move at the right price, then that should be okay. But, I, you know, what's your thoughts? Let me know. Always like to hear your comments. I do listen to them all. And uh, um, the other thing is, yes, I will probably drop the price when I remarket it. Um, I'm actually having um, some meetings with my pension uh, suppliers. Uh, I've had a couple, and then I've got a big one with them next week because... At the end of the day, I'm spending money keeping this house going. And it's just holding me back from doing what I want to do. And I feel, I know I'm only 50, I'm, well, I'm 54 next month. Oh, God. Um, but the more time I can't go and do what I want to do is, is time that's very valuable to me. And, you know, I... You know, when I get to my mid-60s, I might not be as able as I am now. I need to get out and do it while I can. Anyway, I'll keep you updated with how that all works. So that's been one of the big questions. And yes, we're getting rid of the estate agent and we're starting again at the end of October when I get back from Australia. Now, another question is, would I consider renting my house out until the market picks up? And I think I have answered this before, but I do keep revisiting this question and reevaluating it, but I don't think it's really going to be for me. Because by the time I've got the rent and I've paid the management fee and then I've paid the taxes on the rent I've got, then I've got the aggravation of if the boiler breaks and you've got to fix it, and I don't want that. I just want to be free of all this and go and live a lovely free life <laughs> wherever I want. So I'm not sure renting is really going to be an option for me. Um, I do have a friend that has a, uh, like he, he provides landlord services. He is an estate agent, but mainly for renting. So I was going to have a little chat with him and get some numbers, but I don't think that is actually going to work for me. Now, I love this question that was emailed to me. 
how did I find the decluttering process? And I'm going to be really honest with you, when I first started it, it was so daunting and also very scary because I am a hoarder and I love having my things around me, you know, um, like sentimental things, all my photos, all my travel souvenirs, and I kind of missed having them around. But once I started the process and I kind of got into it, and then, you know, especially with the garage sale, and I could, I got a lot of support from people in the local area coming around and like just buying things that they probably don't want either, just to support me. But once you start getting on with it and everything starts reducing, it's funny how your mindset changes and everything is changing. The way I'm spending money is changing. You know, I'm, I'm gearing myself up for this new adventure in my life that I'm, I'm just dead set on doing. So although I found it really, really difficult um, emotionally at the beginning, it was very hard to let go of things. Um, it's much easier now, much easier. And all the things, like I've got about 10 boxes of things that I really don't want to get rid of that one day, if I have a home again, I would want to put back in them and some pictures. Um, my son's going to store those for me. Other things like family heirlooms, I, I pass back to another member of the family to take care of. So my, my brother has taken my grandmother's, it's a fake fur coat, but she wore it all the time. And I don't want to put that in storage and I don't want it to get lost. And although he said he wouldn't look after anything else, <laughs> he did agree to find wardrobe space for that. And some of the other things I gave back to other members of the family. Now, one of my most treasured items is my vinyls, but more importantly, my dad's vinyl records. <coughs> Excuse me. He was a massive Jeffro Toll fan. And um, he, has, he has all the vinyls, he always has. And, when, uh, when he was older and I was taking care of him, he, ha he had a little flat in a residential, like, um, like warden-assisted housing near me so I could keep an eye on him and I knew he was safe. And he had all his albums, so I bought him a little record player and it kept him so happy. And we would spend many an afternoon just listening to his albums with him and that, they're just so important to me. So when my younger son said to me, look, mum, I don't have space to store much but if there is one thing that you just cannot have ruined you know um, you cannot put into storage I will take it and I said will you take my vinyls oh, and he said of course <laughs> and I said but don't scratch them and don't be doing eh, 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 with them <laughs> and he won't he better not anyway so that because that was the one thing I don't and the other thing is um I wear my dad's cold ring around my neck and I don't know if I want to risk losing that on travels um this will, was always meant you know that my all my family know that this is meant to go to my one of my sons so I might give it to him before I leave so I always know that it's safe but yes in general when I got into the swing of it it got really easy and then it became it became a bit fanatical and um yeah, I, I, and you know what, we're in the gym, I've so fanat got so fanatical about it, I've started doing it at the gym as well, and I've been tearing cupboards out and throwing away stuff, and people can't find anything there, not that they ever looked anyway, but um, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's addictive once you get going, and uh, all my neighbours uh, just used to be now filling their bins. <laughs> oh. And did I regret planting bamboo? No. No. What I do regret is not taming it and chopping it back because bamboo is beautiful. It's a, it's a fantastic screen. So the back of my garden is a main road. Bamboo helps reduce the noise and also gives you great coverage. But what I do regret is when it gets wet or um, seemingly it tends to lean over, then it doesn't look very attractive. And that's, I think, when people get most concerned because they can't see that it's clumped at the bottom. It's not spreading. Um, so I do regret that I didn't tidy it up more. 
before I started you. And, um, but as you've seen in my garden decluttering video, I completely ripped out some of the bamboos, lots of the plants, I uh, got rid of all my pots, and the garden looks absolutely huge now. But no, I don't regret, and I don't regret my banana trees and all my other things. It's a style, and at the end of the day, if you don't like it, throw some weed killer down and dig it up. I perhaps wouldn't say that to a potential buyer, but that's the gist. Now, I was also asked, and this was a very interesting one, and perhaps uh, you know, people have views on this, but somebody did say to me when I was talking about how I was going to fund my travels through my, you know, through the work I do at the moment, um, from selling my house and some investments I have, and you know, um, my pensions when they come through. And some people, it, it, you know, got a couple of comments on, on the video, it was, what about leaving a legacy for my kids? Why am I spending all my money now? Hmm. It's, it, it's an interesting debate, but this is where I'm coming from. I have paid for two weddings. I've um, supported both in buying a house. I've put one through university, one through um, a diving course. I've taken them on expensive holidays. I've, you know, I gave them a good start in life. I gave them everything I had and I would give them everything I had. Um, so now it's time for me to spend, you know, what I have left on myself, doing what I want to do. There's no point me giving them the money when I die and they're in their 40s, they needed it when they were in their 20s and their early 30s when they were starting out. And so that was my choice to do. Now, I know other people will think otherwise and think, oh no, you should be leaving something. But to be honest, and uh, both my sons will say the same. Actually, my younger son said to me, if you die and you haven't spent all your money, I'll be very cross with your mother. There you go. And finally, I do get a lot of questions about traveling alone. Am I worried about traveling alone? No, absolutely not. I, I really do, I think it's because I've been on my own for so long. I'm used to my own company and I'm used to entertaining myself. And I like not having to answer to anyone or, I'm very selfish, I know, but I, I'm happy to do that, go where I want when I want and not have to consider the feelings of someone else. You know, I've, I've raised my kids and I always put them first and I've all, you know, I've considered them all their lives. Now they've got their lives. I don't have to do that anymore. So I'm, and I'm not worried about, I don't worry about safety and things because I do research where I'm going and if I go anywhere where I'm, I'm not sure, well, I'll just be, you know, extra careful and I just do everything I can to mitigate it. And to be honest, something could happen to me here in Stratford-upon-Avon. You just don't know, do you? And I don't want to live my life scared of doing the things I really want to do. So, no, I'm not worried about travelling on my own at all. And funding it. Well, I think uh, I've talked about this um, in, you know, quite a bit and a bit earlier here today and also in another video of my plans, you know, I've got like my investments and I've got a little bit of work I'm doing and the sale of my house and eventually my pension. So I'm working on a budget of 2,000 a month. It's not a lot. You know, I want to go to Japan, for instance. I'm not gonna be able to do that on 2,000 pounds a month. But I'm doing things now to try and supplement my income. So my YouTube channel, and hopefully get that monetized at some point. Um, I'm, you know, using uh, Amazon affiliate links, and I'm going to do a video on that this week to show you how easy it is to set up, potentially make a few pence, and I'll do some other things, and I will share what I'm doing, but um, just if you, you can make a few hundred pounds extra, that's going to help, isn't it? Um, I'm, not, you know, I've been training myself to be frugal, so I don't need to go and spend a fortune on things. I'm, I'm not particularly into all the fancy hotels and things, as long as it's clean, I'm, I'm happy, um, so I don't need five star or anything, I just need clean and comfy, and I'm happy, 
I've just been in new places, doing new things. Yay. <laughs> and I suppose the other thing someone asked me was, um, what if you get sick when you're abroad? Well, you know, I get sick at home in the UK and I don't have anyone to look after me. You know, my sons don't come running around when I call them anymore. And I had an injury about six months ago. I've had it a couple of times now. And my ankle just seems to go. And then I have this terrible pain in my foot and I cannot stand up on it. And last time it happened, well, I was just crawling around the floors. I thankfully found, instead of my crutches in the garage, it was a bit of a mission to get them out on one foot, but I did it. And I had to look after myself. And, you know, if I have flu or or COVID or whatever, you know, you just look after yourself. If I was seriously ill, I would, you know, call a friend or something. But in the main, I've learned to look after myself. And I can do that anywhere. So uh, it's just one of those things. And, of course, I will have insurances. So if anything seriously happens, I would be covered. I'm super excited to go travelling. I, I just cannot wait. Nothing's going to stop me doing it. <laughs> no, nothing. Um, anyway. Um, they are some of the questions that people have been asking me and I thought I would share the answers with you. Um, obviously you can keep asking your questions, I'd love to hear from you and uh, I'll speak to you all soon. Thank you. Bye.